When it comes to foraging for food, are you a little like me? In that your heart is saying, yeah man, get out there, forage for your free food, it's gonna be great. But your brain is saying, behave yourself daft lad, you're gonna kill yourself. Then keep watching this video because I think I've got a little something you might be interested in. Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always, a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. If you enjoy watching this video, if you're not yet a subscriber and you want to improve your bushcraft skills, then click on that red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and you won't miss any of my future videos. Cheers. Let's go back to the intro to this video then. I think as people who enjoy the outdoors, as people who perhaps enjoy bushcrafting or just getting outside, one of the, um, one of the valuable aspects of doing that is being able to positively and safely identify what is around you, determine what is edible, what, what, edible, what is edible, what you can take away and how you can process it and how you can consume it. That's the theory, and I'm all behind the theory, all for the theory. The practice is, I've rarely done it. I've rarely done it with anything other than those things that I am 101% certain about. There's even stuff that I've seen that I am 101% certain about, but I've just not done anything with it. I've just left it in situ. I've never gone that next step after the positive ID and actually taken it away or, or, or there on the spot consumed it and I aim to change that in 2020 and I aim to change it with the aid of a Christmas gift that I was given from my in-laws. And here is that gift folks, it is the Forager's Calendar by John Wright. Let me explain to you a little bit about this book. This book is aimed at people in the British Isles. It may well be applicable to overseas, but it's specifically written for people in the British Isles. It takes you through the calendar year from January, beginning of January to the end of December. And what it talks about in this book are those species that are easily identifiable, that are, that are prevalent, that can be used for foraging and, and, and to be consumed within the British Isles and the British shorelines. Because it's based around a calendar year, it does a very good job of explaining and showing what is in season, and I use the word loosely, what is in season in that month. It explains some ID features, there's some good quality photographs of them, and then it explains how you might want to take them away and how you could process them to consume them. What I really like about this book though is all of that, but it recognises that a plant or a species or a fungi doesn't just exist in that calendar month. It may be more uh, fruitful in that month, there may be more of it, it may be that other conditions uh, allow it to be more uh, prevalent and stand out more, but it recognises that just because something is listed as being around in January doesn't mean you're not going to find it in December, possibly February, maybe November, quite possibly March. So it does a really good job of sort of explaining, yes, this is the month when it's likely to be seen, but keep an eye out for a month or two either side, because of course plants and species don't just switch themselves off like a light because it's the 31st of January, and they don't just switch themselves on on the 1st of February. So this is what I'm planning to do throughout 2020. I'm planning to, to read this book on a month by month, always remembering to look at the month or two either side, interweaving, to look at this book, to identify potentially at least one species that this book is listing each month, and to not just capture that on camera, hello, but also to actually take it to the next step and take it away and consume it, or consume it there and then on the spot. And January seems as good a place as any from a calendar year to start. So I've been diving into January. January tells me that black mustard, velvet shank, and woodier are all good species to look out for this month. But it also goes on to say that there's no reasons why I might not be finding Alexander's, Bittercresses, Sorrel, Dandelions, Gallic Mustard, Oak Moss, the list goes on and on and on. There's probably, I don't know, eight to 10 other species that I might well find in January. And this is what I like about this book. It just does it, you know, it, it directs you to what you're likely to find, 
but it also gives you some, some suggestions that depending on your geographic location and the conditions, you may also find these species as well. So this month I've been looking out for black mustard, brassica nigra, velvet shank, flamulina velutipes, <laughs> and woodier or juicy as it's often referred to, auricularia auricula judea. So three species I've been looking for. We're in the last couple of days of January and I have to say I've only actually found one of those species but one of course is better than none so why don't we up sticks move the camera just over there and I'll show you the species that I've discovered suggested from this book in the month of January 2020. And this is what I've discovered folks. Woodier, jellier, juicier, auricularia, auricula, Judea. It is a fungus. It grows primarily, although not exclusively, on dead or dying elder, which is exactly what we're looking at right now. Very, very jelly like to the touch. I want to say it's got a slimy texture, but actually, when I take my fingers away, there's, there's very little residue left on the fingers, but it certainly feels. And of course, when I take that off, if I hold that up to the camera, to the lens there, it does indeed resemble, both in shape and sort of depth, three-dimensionally, an ear. Hence the, uh, the juicier, jelly ear, woodier, common moniker that it goes by. So I found an absolute ton of these, both on this piece that is has sheared off and is hanging in the air, and also the piece of that that had actually dropped onto the ground. An absolute ton of this. I'm led to believe from reading the book that actually this can be found all year round. So although it is January, it can actually be found all year round. So it's quite a, quite a good one, I guess, to once you've spotted it, to take a relatively small amount or just what you need and then remember that spot and keep coming back throughout the year because there's a good chance you'll be able to find a little more of it. There we have it. That's my forage find for the month of January. So let's have a talk about how I might use this then. There we have the piece that I've just taken off on camera. Same piece there. Ways of being able to use this then. It is just considered something of a delicacy in the Far East. In fact, if you ever uh, go to a Chinese restaurant and eat Chinese soup, there's a good chance the mushrooms that are floating around in this are this particular species or a very similar species can be eaten as it is and I'm just about to do it on camera for the first time ever so uh, this won't be something that's been rehearsed. Interestingly these can be dried out just left on a piece of paper in a room and dried out and will shrink down quite considerably as they dehydrate. The book also suggests that once they've dehydrated they can be kept indefinitely and reconstituted with some water or some form of vegetable or even better mushroom stock. So from a bushcraft perspective, I think these are a great, so something great for you to be able to perhaps find, forage, dry out and then take out with you to be able to add to stews and broths and soups or whatever it is that you're, you're making and eating out in the woods. Another interesting fact, apparently, of their dry weight, when these dry out, uh, the 65% carbohydrate content of their dry weight. And I know from having been on the intermediate bushcrafting course, I'm linking to it in the top right hand corner of your screen, being able to find carbohydrates when outdoors bushcrafting can be a bloody time consuming and exhausting and very tiring thing to do. It, invo it involved me digging or wading out into lakes. So um, being able to find something that's, that's rich in carbohydrate that is literally in front of you, very, very recognisable, um, almost impossible to um, mix up with anything else would be is something great to remember. So I've, I've fudged around it long enough. I'm just tearing this apart at the moment, this ear, and this is not doing a good job, but you may just be able to see as I've kind of torn that apart, that almost gelatin, gelatinous, jelly-like centre to, that's a good angle there. So let's give it a try. Quite crunchy, much, much crunchier than I thought it would be. Immediately has that mushroom-like taste to it, you know, the, if you go down the, the aisle in Lidl or Sainsbury's and get your closed cup mushrooms. 
very definitely got a mushroomy taste to that. If I'd blindfolded someone, if someone had blindfolded me, put that in my mouth and asked me to, to guess broadly what it was, and I'm normally terrible at these things, I would have definitely said that it was, you know, it was a mushroom of some description. <laughs> that isn't bad at all. It, it, I want to say there's almost no taste to it. There is, there is, there is that hint of mushroom. There's no doubt about that. But it doesn't taste slimy. It feels slimy, yes, but it doesn't taste slimy. It's got that crunch to it. It's got that mushroom, mushroomy aftertaste. I'm somewhat disappointed. Oh, I sound bad. Don't I? This is the first of these videos I've done and I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm disappointed in a good way. I'm disappointed that I've been able to find one of the species or one, one of the, uh, the forage items from the book. I'm pleased that I'm incredibly confident what it is. I'm pleased that I'm able to consume it right now in front of the camera and not have to take it home and process it and potentially not get it, not get it out to you by the end of January. I'm pleased that it, I'm not balking after tasting and not throwing up. The disappointment is I just, I don't know, I, I, I just expected a more vivid taste. I expected something more than what it is. But I shouldn't be put off by that. I found something, I found something that's easy to ID, I found something that's safe, I found something that at dry weight is 65% carbohydrate. Let's not forget that important aspect. So all in all, I'm, I'm quite pleased. I've only got another 11 months to repeat this, uh, th this success each month, and I'm sure that that book will definitely help me to do that. Excuse me. It's quite, it's, it's quite surprising to have something that looks and feels so, because it does, it looks a bit, ugh, feels a bit, ugh. It's, it does not, that, that is not reflected once you actually pop it into your mouth. That's what she said. Yeah, an intro, interesting one. Anyway, I'm, I'm ruminating too much here. It's gone. I'm gonna go back and get some more and take some on for the kids. There you go, kids, daddy's treat, dad's treat. Where was I? Excuse me. I'm quite pleased with myself, I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna go harvest some more of those, I'm gonna take those back home, dry some out, give the kids some. Um, and now I'll get this video wrapped up and published out to you um, probably the beginning of February, although clearly it was recorded in January. Looking forward to the rest of this book. Just one last thing to, to point out here, folks. I am by absolutely no stretch of the imagination whatsoever a foraging expert. If you choose to go out and, and, and look for this particular species, Oricalia, Oriculia, 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 Judea, Wood Deer, Jusia, Jellia, you do so at your own risk. If in doubt, leave it out. You know the score. Uh, but I must admit, this was an easy, a relatively easy one to start off with, so I'm quite pleased with that. If you want to see my foraging exploits throughout the rest of the year, in conjunction with that book, in conjunction, of course, with the Tree and Plant ID Masterclass that I've been undertaking for getting up to the end of the third year now, I think, with Paul Kirtley and Frontier Bushcraft, then, um, then check those that, that playlist of videos out at the end of this video. It's appearing on your screen in one of these corners right now. Check that out. If you're not yet a subscriber, click that red subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video, be it foraging or otherwise, very shortly. Cheers.